I am so excited that I'm doing this video right now. Finally, finally. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new home renovation vlog. I am so excited for this one. It has been such a long time coming. And honestly, I've just hit the ceiling. I'm like, I am done. I want this done. I want it completed and I am going to do it myself. So hello, if you are new around here, my name is Amy. I am currently coming up to nearly two years in my first house, which happens to be a new build. It is a detached four bedroom new build out in the country. I live in the Southwest of England and I'm a first time buyer. So this was my first home and we are literally transforming it or we have been for the past two years on this channel, transforming it into from a house to a home. Now, because it is a new build, it is a blank canvas, but also what comes with new builds, if you guys know, is the fact that like they recommend that you don't paint walls. You kind of don't mess around with the building too much for the first two years, just because you're in a warranty period your, your building's in a warranty for 10 years, but you're kind of in a cover period for two years with most builders. And also you just get house settling, such as cracking and obviously just, just the little things that can go on with the wall. So it seems like a waste of time to go ahead and paint a beautiful wall when you could get hairline cracks in it and you'll just have to do it again in a while. It's only recommended, lots of people paint their houses as soon as they move in and that's absolutely fine. I've chosen not to. However, as we are coming up to those two years, and especially with this room, I haven't noticed too many cracks or anything like that so I am totally ready to get this done. So what we're going to do today you would have seen by the thumbnail we are going to be doing some wall panelling all over this room. I have wanted this for as long as I knew I was getting a house and I've started looking at inspo and Pinterest and Instagram accounts. I just love the way that this looks. You can see on the screen all the different kinds of panelling there are. I'm not a massive fan of the chunky squaring ones. That's just personal preference. I like the ornate sort of more I don't even know, was it, se like, I don't even know, 70s, was it? Kind of more so, I, I think it's timeless anyway. It's all down to personal preference. Like the more chunkier one, I feel is a lot more modern, um, which is why I totally get how people do it. And I do like the way it looks. It's just, for me, I, I kind of know exactly the vision I want. And this is the picture that I'm going to be trying to achieve or something in line with this. So originally when I was gonna do full wall paneling, I was just gonna do this wall here, but I've decided now I wanna do the whole room because I am gonna be painting. So I'm gonna be doing half of the wall. We're gonna be painting a light beige color, of which I'll show you the paint samples I've got in a second. And then the bottom half is gonna be white with panels. So I was going to do a project like this about a year ago and it totally failed because here are the pieces of panelling wood that never went on the wall. Um, but this is essentially what panelling is, or the real official term of this is moulding. So as you can see, it is just a piece of wood that has got sort of a carved in design in it. So this was an attempted failed project, um, but today I am going to do it. I don't care, I'm gonna do it. Anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop waffling on because this is gonna be a long video anyway. So it is early Saturday morning. We're, I'm hoping to get this project done all by this weekend. Whether that's realistic or not, I don't know. But the first plan of action and the first thing we need to do is put the paint samples on the wall because I'm gonna be ordering my materials from B&Q today. So I need to figure out which paint I like. These are the samples that I've picked up. So I went ahead and got a bunch of Dulux ones. I'm not gonna lie, these kind of, these ones at the bottom, and that one actually were all on sale. So I was like, I'll just grab them anyway to give them a go. I know this is gonna to be too dark, so I'm probably not even gonna swatch that one to be fair. The two main contenders, or it will be three, but the two main Dulux contenders are these ones here, which are Pebble Shore, which is a matte, and Egyptian Cotton, which is also a matte. Now, I really wanted Pharaoh and Bull, this exact color, this um, skimming stone, which is number 241. So I picked up a sample pot and I also put it out on my Instagram and asked you guys if Farrow and Ball was really worth the money. I watched the inside Farrow and Ball the other day and it sort of showed how they make the paint and everything. And I have heard reviews in real life from my family and friends where they say Farrow and Ball is 100% worth it because the difference is a small pot of this is 56 pounds, whereas the Dulux is half that price. Now, I am not gonna skim out on this room. This is my dream house. I'm gonna pay whatever I need to pay to get it done because I am doing it myself. I did get quotes, by the way, to do all of this work, and it was it, w it was just hundreds. And I was like, do you know what? It's wood on a wall and a bit of maths. I'm also extremely fortunate to have the most amazing dad in the world, um, who is so thrifty, and the same with my granddad. They're just people that will not pay for work unless it is 
very specialist such as like plastering and things like that um so I kind of run that streak in my, with that my dad and my granddad have got and I want to learn I want to be able to be really thrifty and be able to do it myself and I just think it's a really good skin in life don't sit back and pay people to do it like try and do it yourself obviously within reason. Anyway, Fowler and Ball. I really want this colour, I think, Skimming Stone. So I'm gonna put this on the wall and I read a blog apparently that I think it was Egyptian cotton. This is supposed to be a dupe for this. So I picked up both. I'm gonna put them next to each other and see what it looks like. But yes, let's get these on the wall because I'm itching, itching to see what they look like. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the two contenders from Dulux. Okay, so the first one I'm going to try is the main contender, which is Egyptian cotton. So I think I'm just going to try them on here. I'm doing this now because obviously they dry a completely different colour. Also, I'm doing it at a wall that's facing the light. Okay, now this one is Pebble Shore. I'm already liking that one way more. I better write these down as well, because I'm going to forget what to look. This one is Nutmeg White. I already know this is going to be too pink and too dark, but I'm just going to put it on here anyway, just for... Ah, yeah, I hate that. No, 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 no. This is Natural Calico, but I think this is going to look too yellow. Yeah, it's more of like a magnolia shade. Okay, so now I'm going to try Fowler and Ball Skimming Stone. The colour looks awesome in here, I'm not going to lie. So, this was the one that was supposed to be a dupe of, so I'm going to kind of put it between these two. So far, my favourite is Pebble Shore. Okay, so here are what the samples are looking like while they're wet. 100% we're going to write those two off. That one is exactly like, I would say, like brick mortar. Here are the other ones. Now, I don't know if it's just because I know it's Fowler and Ball, but I'm leaning towards this one a lot. However, Pebble Shore, I feel like, is a very good dupe for that. I don't think Egyptian cotton... Egyptian cotton's way too warm. It's got loads more pink in it. Nutmeg White is also really nice. I just kind of like the grey undertone in Pebble Shore which is also what the Faro and Ball one has. So I'm going to leave these to dry for a while. I'm going to get on with the next task, which is all of the measurements. So I've got a one meter spirit level. I've got a laser level. I've got everything here. And I need to start drawing all over the walls with pencil to get my borders out. So I need to take this off. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera because honestly, it's going to be so long and tedious and there's not much you're going to see. But before that, I think I'm going to go make a cup of tea. That's for sure. It's such a beautiful day today. I'm so excited to do this. I've got such a reno bug. Like I just want to do, I want to be able to do everything in this house. Like next thing you know, I'll be building an extension just because if I believe I can, I will. <laughs> should calm down and that I'm overthinking everything about you and that we're good the way we are mm -hmm. but I don't <sighs> okay so the main wall is done so I have no concept of time I also don't know if you can even see that because it's so faint but this looks great. This is honestly exactly how I want it. They're almost squares, which works out quite nice. But obviously the one thing you gotta remember, whenever you're doing a room, every wall is different. So your squares won't be in uniform, but your gaps need to be. Also, you've gotta have a little bit of a tolerance for obviously skirting boards won't be 100%. Walls sometimes aren't 100% straight. So your tolerances can lie on those sides, but between and between that, between where the dado is gonna be, there shouldn't be any any flaw so if you're going to let something go a bit it should be the bottom or sides so i've done that now i'm very excited to see it like this because it really gives me a real vision of how it looks next i'm going to move on to this wall over here because once i go around to this side i'm going to have to pull out all of my dressing table um and it's so heavy and big i'm going to put it all in the hallway thankfully we've got a nice big well, landing, we've got a really nice big landing. So I'm gonna pull everything out there. Another thing I want to let you guys know um, in the reno of this room is I was gonna get rid of this dressing table because I don't know if you know, but this dressing table I've had for ever since we moved home, so 
10 years it's been a long time um but it's got a massive crack in it um i dropped a candle on it years ago and i've just kind of learned to live with it even though it really annoys me so i was just gonna sell this on facebook marketplace and get rid of it but it was so expensive it was from next home i think it was around like i don't even know if they sell them anymore but i know next still do mirrored furniture i swear it was like 600 pounds it was quite a lot of money so what i've decided to do is I got a piece of mirror cut exactly to size, which we're going to basically adhesive and seal on top, so it should be good as new. I'm going to take off all of these um, these handles, give them a good clean. So I've decided I'm keeping it, but I am going to be replacing this mirror. I tried to make a um, DIY Hollywood mirror, and I mean it's lovely, I love it very much so. It's big and it was very affordable to make, but I'm ready for my dream mirror, so I'm gonna order that, but that's to come, probably in another video. Okay, so it's currently 11.30. I have done this other wall, which you won't be able, I don't know how much on camera's coming up, but I'm doing two here. And then Andy's just helped me make a mess of the hallway. This is what it currently looks like. I've literally got everything here. My dressing table's there ready for repair. We've got the other one in the bedroom. Um, we've got my giant mirror on the bed over there. I've literally taken over all these rooms, but it means now that I've got my open alcove here, which is just, oh, it makes such a difference not having, like it makes the room feel humongous. But yeah, I'm gonna crack on with this and then we should be at the stage where I can measure up for the molding, order it and we can go to B&Q and get it. Also, the paint samples have dried. We've done two coats on these two because I've completely wrote off, obviously, these two. And also nutmeg white. I don't think I'm a massive fan of it. Pebble Shore and Egyptian Cotton are both lovely colours, but I love the Faro and Ball. It's just the right one. Pebble Stone is a bit too grey, and Egyptian Cotton is a little bit too pink, whereas I feel like Skimming Stone is right in the middle. So, looks like it's Faro and Ball Skimming Stone. And I'm taking a well deserved coffee break. And I've got my little dashing up here for snuggles! Snuggles! Ah. So I've just placed my order on B&Q. I can collect it in less than an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to be realistic with you guys, because I, I guess this video people will use as kind of a tutorial or kind of a bit of guidance or whatever. So in terms of cost of how to do this, it's really down to what's available. So I ordered my molding and my data rel from B&Q. I will link what ones I use down below. Um, they should be available nationally in the UK. The cost of the wood, so let me just have a look. My total cost was a bit more because I had to get some other materials. But just so you guys are aware, in case you were thinking of doing a project like this, obviously we do need to be money conscious in this world. Um, so if you do want to take this project on yourself, the, for the wood alone, I paid around a hundred, over a hundred and sixty pounds, just over a hundred and sixty. That is for this exact kind of molding. <laughs> so this is the molding. This is the exact one I'm going to be getting. This was from my old project. So, oh, it's okay. Get, gonna get another one of these. These are twenty one mil wide, and then the uh, dado rail. So the main bit that's going around is fifty eight mil. So it's quite a lot thicker. So picked that up, and then for paint, I did go ahead and order. I did the Faro and Bull um, skimming stone and it's the estate emulsion. I didn't even realize I went to go order and there was estate eggshell and something else. And I was like, I don't know what those are. So I just went with that one. I'm not going to lie guys. I know that the other samples went on with the little roller thing and I put that one on with a brush, but honestly the finish is so much nicer. Um, not to mention that the color is exactly in between the two that I was unsure on. So I'm pretty sure, but I'm hoping that one tub should do this room fine. Fower and Ball also is 50, well with this one it was 52 pounds a tub and that is for the 2.5 liters. So that should be enough. They do a larger tub for 70 I think. So I'm gonna very much regret if I needed more because I would have got better value for money for that. But anyway, so I'm gonna go collect that in a moment. I'll take you guys with me and then we'll come straight back and I think it's going to be time to crack on with with painting, which is crazy. It is currently 25 past one. I have not stopped all day, but I just when I do projects like this, I just want to get them done. So yes, let's go collect the stuff from B&Q and let's get on to the next step. Since I met you for the first time mm, You know we should work it out You know we should work it out 
Before I'm too invested I should probably ask ya Ask you all my questions Get to know you better But can you be trusted? Will you I am conscious that's the entire vlog I am just being out of breath and looking haggled You're gonna have to excuse me This is, this is the DIY look Okay, so I've been to B&Q and I've picked up all my materials. So good, click and collect. I literally just click and collect, surprisingly. So I bought the five pack of the um, Dado Rail. I've got all of my bits of molding there. Jerry's up here because he's been such a good boy today and been downstairs impatient. I picked up some polyfiller wood flex. Um, this is just for the joins of the woods because obviously sometimes it's not going to be absolutely perfect so it's going to be cutting it with a mitre saw so not sure how perfect it's going to be so i've grabbed this it was only five pound fifty i thought it would be a lot smaller so it's big it's gray but it doesn't matter because obviously we're painting over that anyway i got some caulk i've just realized the thing he's gone from it but it's probably in the car and then i did get the farrow and ball skimming stone emulsion estate emulsion it's a signature chalky very matte finish for interior walls and ceiling so ended up getting that and then we happen to have one of these in the garage plus i've got loads of um paint brushes because I'm going to be cutting in the ceilings by myself so wish me a steady hand. It is currently 3.17 so I'm hoping to get this done. I'm hoping it will only need one coat because these are pure white walls so there's no reason it's got really really good coverage that's why I ended up going with Farrow and Ball so I'm hoping that one coat will be enough and then mum and dad are coming over tomorrow morning so dad's going to be here ready to help me install everything um, and bringing over all the tools. So yeah, I'm gonna crack on with some painting. Get ready for some very satisfying time lapses. This is the last time you're gonna see this room all white, because it's time to paint. And it's done, thank goodness. So it is gone seven o'clock now, and finally, actually, what time is it, honey? 7.30, I did, let me check my watch. 7.30. It's 7.30, we just come back from a little dog walk because Jerry's been so good all day, he's just been in while me and Andy have been doing our own things. Um, but it's all painted and ready for tomorrow, so I am so relieved this is done. I took ages like doing the cutting in and stuff and obviously it's not perfect because I am not a painter, but I need to go over with my white, but that can be done at any point, just tidying it up. It was, I needed to get this done because as I said, the dado rail's going in. So obviously I want it to be nice and neat and clean. I also need to actually paint the dado rail white from the white emulsion, but I'm just so tired. I've, I've been at this since flipping, well, I spoke to you guys this morning, didn't I? What was it, like literally nine o'clock? and it's 7 30 so non-stop need to have a shower i need to wash my hair i need to eat dinner i need to sit down um and i'm we've got another full day of this tomorrow so yeah but this is gonna be this is gonna be like everything i i'm gonna need to order like my favorite mirror oh my god i need to order so much stuff i'm gonna get so excited <laughs> i will check in with you all tomorrow morning before mum and dad get here and i need to crack on with just a bit of paint touch-ups and putting my white emulsion on my dado rail. Good morning guys, it is the next day and we are cracking on with another full day of getting this room done. So I've come in and the color is just stunning. I absolutely love the way it looks. I'm talking a bit quiet just because it's early in the morning and Andy's still waking up. I am such an early bird though, so I get up early. I can appreciate on the camera it's going to be hard to see but so my mission this morning is my parents are coming over probably in about an hour or two and um, I am going to go ahead and paint the dado rail. I've also been light shopping for this room because this is what I have here right now. This is from Ikea and it was meant to be black and I painted it white and look at the colour of it. 
I don't think on camera that's going to justify anything, but it's so warm and orange. I bought, actually bought this in a vlog with you guys when we went to Ikea to see, to go shopping or come shopping with me in Ikea. Um, I tried to spray paint it white. Worst idea ever. It looks horrific. The bulb color is so warm. It's horrible. Um, so I've been shopping this morning on, or like window shopping, should I say, online, to try and find the right light. And I, I know exactly what I want. I want a super modern light. And I found this one on Awesome. You guys know I love Awesome. I work with them a lot, but I also am a customer. I do buy stuff from them all the time. So this is the light I think I'm gonna get for this room. I'm not gonna rush and buy this because I wanna go out into stores. I wanna go into Denelm and things like that and have a look um, and be in queue and things. So. Yeah, I'm not going for anything too signature on here. I just want it refined, glamorous, and yeah, just refined. Like really glamorous and refined. <laughs> That's the two words. Ask you all my questions. Get to know you better. But can you be trusted? Will you take me for granted? Okay, we're in the thick of it. We're doing the corner cuts here so this is where i needed dad's help as you can see they need to be at an angle like that for where they meet and then we're just going to cut these off we've already done those jerry's in here project managing yeah it's all looking good so dad's just helping me with these cuts and then he's going to help me do one box and i'm going to do the rest this is a mitre saw as well that dad's using so as you can see you just pivot this and it gets you a nice clean cut so <coughs> that's where we're at there's loads of good stuff out there now anyway. Like this, this one called Pink Grip was the one. This one called that uh, sticks like S star ash T to blank it. Oh. oh you put yours in first time, yeah. Yeah. Just insert that in against. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> quite good that it's um, malleable. Yeah. Just make sure you push over the squeeze all that left. This needs to come down a bit. And, just and it is day three. So today is Monday. I've taken the day off of work because I want to get this done and I don't want to compromise on rushing on time. Managed to have a little bit of time off yesterday. As you've seen from those few clips, my dad came over and he helped me fit the dado rail, which is now all around the room. And today my job is to actually get the panelling, well to get this finished. I want to get the panelling on the wall, I want to get it corked and I want to get it painted. We have got one panel over here which is very exciting so I'm about to finish off doing all of the panels in the room. Thankfully as you guys know it's a fairly small room so there is only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine panels to do. I say only um, but this is the way I'm doing it. So I've got all of my wood out here and then I have got a mitre saw here of which I cut the wood. This is what allows me to cut it at this angle. I've already got all of the measurements written out on the wall. You won't be able to see them, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them all to size before I actually stick them on the wall. We just did this as a tester because we didn't know what we were gonna use to stick um, the stuff onto the wall. So the molding is a lot heavier. So in there we've actually got grip fill along with we used a nail gun just to pop in a couple of nails because we were finding the grip fill was actually starting to slowly go down. So there's just a couple of nails in just to support it into the wall. As this is plasterboard, I couldn't get away with just using nails. So we did use grip fill for that. But for these, ideally, I don't want to use grip fill because it's just adhesive on the wall that ideally I kind of don't want. So my dad actually had a roll of this. Now this is like industrial double-sided tape. So believe it or not, that is double-sided tape to the wall. It's also great because it means then if we ever need to take it off, of which we're not, it just means that it will be a case of probably sanding and we won't pull off any of the um, plaster or any of the plasterboard. So that's the idea. Hopefully I've got enough here. It's currently nine o'clock um, on Monday and I'm going to get this done today. I've got the whole day. I will cancel the gym tonight if I need to. I need to pop down to B&Q again to get some paint later on. That'll be fine, because once I've called, that'll give me time to go while it's drying. And yeah, so let's get this done. Is 
cut. And not only is it cut, it's also been all taped up. This took so long, it was so tedious, but we're here. And now the bit of actually putting up the stuff on the wall starts. So this will be a very fun time lapse. And then after that, I am going to probably do some caulking. Um, I'll have to see where we're at and then go to b and I've actually got a surplus of wood. I've got three more, um, I think it's three, three more lengths I didn't actually use. So that's handy, bit of money back. I'm also gonna take back that wood filler. I've got a polyfiller wood filler there. I think the silicone will be fine, um, the cork will be fine. Let's construct these boxes. So I'm gonna be putting up just two lengths you're gonna see and then you're gonna see me and Andy putting in the other two. This is just to ensure that it stays all completely uniform and straight. It's me again. It is currently 4.51. I, since I last spoke to you, I realized I didn't update you what happened. So I went ahead to do the caulking and then I realized that one of the panels over there, the one we did yesterday, had started coming away from the wall um, and it wasn't super secure. So I wasn't happy with that. So I went round with the, the nail gun and put two nails into my paneling so i've just got they're so discreet they're tiny tiny little nails but they're gonna hold them in place so it's rock solid just one on each side of every single panel and then i went ahead and corked all of the corners here and also like the corners of here of all of that so now it's a perfect frame so as you can see here the caulking has just filled in the gaps between where it was. So now when I paint, it's gonna look a lot more flawless. Also, since we last spoke, the sun is blaring. It's so, 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 so sunny today. I ran down to B&Q and I picked up these guys. Because I'm painting the paneled walls now, obviously I can't use a roller because it wouldn't go very far. So I picked up a emulsion brush. This was seven pound from B&Q. And then I went for the Valspar Simplicity Walls and Ceilings Lightweight and Wipeable Formula Pure Brilliant White. And I went for interior matte. I didn't know whether to go for a satin or a matte because this is matte. So I was like, maybe I should go for satin but the wall already is crown emulsion in matte white. So I just thought, to be honest, I'm quite, ha like, I'm quite happy with the way it looks matte. So I think, I'd rather, I think I'm just fine with that. It's better what I know than I don't know. So yeah, let's get on with the final stage, which is painting at five o'clock. Five o'clock, I'm gonna lose daylight in an hour, so I need to hurry up. <laughs> And the painting is all done. And we're all done. The room is done. The furniture is back in, or the pieces that I currently have. I've got two extremely exciting orders coming. As you can probably hear, there's a lot more of an echo in here than there used to be because I've taken out some big pieces of furniture, but this is what the final result looks like. So I do wish I showed you guys before I brought in my furniture, but this, is how we're looking so far. I absolutely love it. This is probably the best place to show you. I've just got this really awkward bit of sun coming in, but the paneling looks absolutely incredible. I am so made up with the way the dado looks, the way the molding looks. Usually that that's there because obviously my door is usually open, so you wouldn't usually see it. Also, I've got my furniture back in here. I have replaced the mirror on top of this. And as you can see, literally you couldn't tell at all that it was broken. So good as new. It was only 38 pounds to get this piece of mirror cut. So never, if you've got mirrored furniture and you break, you know, the top of it or whatever, never ever write it off straight away. I should have done this years ago. Coming in a couple of weeks, or I think it's the first week of November, hopefully I've got a very exciting delivery of the mirror of my dreams that is going on top of here. You'll have to stay tuned and make sure you are subscribed. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. I really, really appreciate it. I know you guys love DIY. I can't wait to show you when that arrives. I ordered the biggest one I could find and 
it's just going to be amazing. Like I said, I'm not sure if I want this unit to stay here. I kind of just wanted it open. You know, I didn't want to hide the panelling too much. But I also think that's absolutely fine. It offers me quite a bit of storage in there. And obviously they match. I've put my little Jo Malone print up here. This is from Etsy. I put my little Pampas wreath just back there. Because I think it fits quite nicely. And then, of course, I have a very empty alcove here. Which y'all might be wondering what I'm doing with that. And again, on route, we have an A amazing piece of furniture. I didn't even know these existed until I shopped around and I seen a couple on Instagram as well and I was like oh my goodness for what I do like fashion hauls and things like that and Instagram posts it's gonna be game changing. And just finally before I finish this video off I did get one new piece of furniture for this room that I can show you guys and it might be right here. So I think earlier in this vlog I showed you a, la uh, a light I wanted from Awesome. However, I changed my mind and this light is literally the best thing I have ever seen. Here is the ceiling light. This is also from Awesome, but it's just obviously a completely different design. I think I, well or not, I do definitely completely prefer this because it is just so glamorous and modern and beautiful. You've got mirror, literally, hi, there you go. And you've got all of the crystals around it. It comes with its own remote control. So I can change it to the yellow light or the white light or the one I always choose, which is white yellow, so neutral. And I can have it on different percentages, so 20%, 50%. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. And for me, who films, this is a filming room. Obviously lighting is super important. If I'm having a really sunny like sunset day, I can put it on the white setting to balance the yellowness of the room. Or if I'm having a bright sunday, I can put in the yellow if I want to add a little bit of tone into my videos. But I am obsessed. I will leave the light linked down below. You will not believe how affordable it is. It is so, so, so affordable. I think it was about 60 quid and it's so big. Like this outer ring, to give you some um, idea, the outer ring is 50 centimeters large um, and it's big. So obviously it doesn't even have light bulbs. It's LED strips. It's super eco-efficient. So of course I will link that down below and a big thank you to Awesome for popping that over. They wanted to get involved in this room reno because they're with me every step of the way. They're literally my first choice to buy things like this for the home from. It's so easy, so cheap, affordable, free shipping, fast shipping and always have a discount code. So I will leave one down in the description box along with the code if you're interested in grabbing a light like this for yourself. But apart from that guys, I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. I know it's been a little bit more of a longer one. Good luck if you are going to plan on doing some paneling of your own please show me over and tag me on my home account which is Amy Michelle home I love to see things like that and I know just generally you enjoy DIY videos like this so I really wanted to share it and I'm so proud of myself for what I have achieved so I'll leave you guys to it thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video next Wednesday ciao